This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. Did you know that downtime can get really expensive? On average, small businesses lose about $427 per minute when their systems are down. And for medium-sized businesses, it can be as high as $9,000 a minute. That adds up fast. That's where Honey Badger comes in. It helps you stay ahead of issues by combining air tracking, performance monitoring, uptime monitoring, and more, all in one simple platform. That means you can fix problems faster and avoid costly downtime before it impacts your business. Best part? It's free to get started, and setup takes as little as 5 minutes. So if you haven't already, bookmark HoneyBadger.io, that's HoneyBadger.io, and keep your business running smoothly. In this episode, we're going to be having a look at some business logic, which people often overlook. So we have a post, and the post has some content. And on this post, we have a Boolean for published. And so this is great. If we unpublish a post, and we update the post, then when someone visits the post, they'll see that there's been nothing published. However, if we were to then publish it and update the post, when the user refreshes the page, it's now published. And so this functionality works and it's good. However, there is some functionality that's left to be desired. We need to think of this scenario. What if I've already written out an article, but I don't want to publish it yet, but instead I want it to be published automatically at a certain date and time. So that means we're not going to be able to rely on the published Boolean, but instead we would need something else. And so in this episode, we're going to refactor this functionality and look at some nuances and try to find the best approach. And so to start off, basically we have a scaffold for our post and we're using action text for the content. And if we look at our migration, we simply have a table for posts with the title and published. And that's really all we have. We have that Boolean and the logic basically on the index. We're basically checking where the posts are published and then we're sorting it by the created at descending. And so there's a bit of refactoring that we're going to have to do. And so to start off, I'm going to generate a migration. And this migration, we're just going to call it the change published to published at on our posts. And within this migration file, we're basically going to add a column. The column that we're going to add is to our post model. And we're going to make it a published at. And we're going to use a date time. So this way, the date time, We can say that any of our posts that are previous than the current time will be considered published, but anything that's set for a future date is scheduled to be published. We also want to remove our column for the posts, and we want to remove the published. Because it could be a performance issue, we can also add an index to our posts, and we want to set the published at. Now, there is a big problem here because if we run this migration, then any of our published posts, so this Boolean is set to true, is going to get removed, and then we have no idea what our published posts are. And so we want to be careful with that so that we don't lose any of our data. And so you really have two options. We could put the migration of the data directly in this migration file, or we could run a rate task to then run the data migrations. If you have millions of records, which during a deployment, if you automatically run the migrations, there could be a timeout or some other issue, then you should go the rate task route. But because we are changing some of the core functionality of our business logic and how this is working, sometimes I'm okay with putting the data migration directly within the SQL file, especially if it's reversible or reversible to some degree. If you are using the rate task route, then make sure that you're not using the remove column for the published Boolean within this migration. Instead, you would want to add the new published stack column, release, run the rate task, and then do another release where you then remove the published column. But in our case, we're going to assume that we've already done our due diligence and seen how many records we're going to be updating and that it's going to run within a reasonable amount of time. And also want to make sure that it's going to be reversible. So in a reversible block, we can basically say for our direction of up, so we're running the migration, 
we're going to execute some raw SQL and we're going to use a here doc just to kind of keep this organized. And we're going to update our posts. We're going to set the publish stat and we need to come up with some kind of date. And I think maybe the easiest thing is the updated at. However, if in your application, your updated at is being changed or updated regularly, then you may need to use the created at or some other field. And we only want to do this on the records where the published is set to true. And for that remove column, we're going to put that in the direction up. In the direction down, so we're doing a rollback, we're going to execute, again, some SQL that we'll put in a here doc. We're going to update our posts. We're going to set the published. So this time, we're setting the Boolean, and we need to check if the published at is not null, and the published at is less than or equal to the current timestamp. You may need to check whether or not this is going to work within your database, but in SQLite, in this case, it should work. We also need to add the column to our posts. We need to add the published. It's going to be our Boolean, and we'll set the default is equal to false. And this is shaping up, but there's actually an easier way to do this. And we could just have a method for our up, and we can have a method for our down. And that's going to essentially do the same thing. So we do need to clean this up a bit. So our add column is now going to go in the def up method, as well as our add index. And so I much prefer this because it is a bit cleaner and it's easier to read. So we can go ahead and run the bin rails db migrate to migrate our database, and we did not receive any errors. But because we did run the remove columns, that is a problem if we don't change the rest of our code. But we could also go ahead and run the bin rails db rollback. If you have multiple databases, you may need to add the primary or whatever the name of your database is. But in this case, because it's SQLite, I don't have that. And we can see that we are adding our column back, and that all ran successfully. But maybe we also need to remove the column, publish that, and also remove the index. And actually, when we remove the column, it should also remove the index. So I'm not even going to worry about that. I just want to keep it as simple as possible. And so this should be good. With everything migrated, I can run the bin rails db rollback. But let's have a look and see what this does when we roll back. It did add the column. It executed the SQL. And then it removed our date time column. We can run the bin rails db migrate to migrate our database and it ran everything in the up method. So that works great. So now we need to update the rest of our application to take advantage of this new feature. And I kind of want to work backwards from the view back down to the model. So where we have our posts, where it's published is equal to true, we can now say that the published stat is less than the current time. But I think that this is going to be a good use case to have a scope. So we can create a scope called published, and instead of our created at descending, we can make this on the published stat is now descending. But the next thing that we need to do is to make sure that the published stat is an allowed parameter. In our post model, we now need to have a scope for the published. And we're going to make this run a query where the published stat is less than the time.current. You could put this in raw SQL if you don't like using the empty dot dot, but let's have a look in our console to see what that actually does. So if we run our post dot published, that is going to return all of the records where the published stat is less than or equal to the current date and time. So that is what we want on the published. And maybe we want to check and get all of the unpublished ones. We have another scope and we'll just check to see where this is nil, but we could also have one for all of our scheduled. And this is going to be where the published stat is greater than the current time. So we can reload our console and we can get our post.scheduled. But you see, the problem with this is that it also does a greater than or equal to. And while that may not ever actually become a problem, because you're going to have to hit the exact millisecond, it could still be an issue because this published stat really needs to be greater than, not greater than or equal to. And so if that was a deal breaker and something that you really had to take into consideration, then you could just use the raw SQL where the published stat 
is greater than, and then you can pass in the time current without the dots. And that'll do it too. But in my case, it really doesn't matter. And doing it like this is sufficient. But just know that the other way is available if needed. And there's always different methods that you can make. So if we want to have a published, and this is actually really great because the published with the question mark is a method that we would have gotten with the Boolean. So there will be less that we would have to update in our application by keeping this the same. But you can check the published stat. You want to make sure that it is present. And then you can check if the published stat is in the past. And so there's so much more that you can do with this. And in the view, in the form, we need to change this to the published stat. And then we can make it a daytime field for the published stat, which by default, it looks like this with the Tailwind CSS. But if we select something, I really don't like how that looks. So if we were to get rid of the classes, just so you can see what it looks like, we can refresh. And now the published stat will show that date time. We can schedule it for the future. And then we can create our post. And it is unpublished. The reason why the unpublished already worked was because in our view, we had that method published. And it would say if it was published or unpublished. So we didn't get any errors or anything we had to do there because we were proactive and created this method. But unpublished doesn't really give the full picture. So there may still be some things that we need to do. We could create a scheduled method, which again, we're going to check if the published data is present. But instead of the past, we want to check if it is scheduled for the future. So that means in our post, we could check if it is scheduled, then we can change it to scheduled. And there are so many ways that you can write this. You don't have to make it a conditional like that. You just put it at the end. If it is published or if it's scheduled or if it's unpublished, if it is not scheduled and if it is not published. And so we can refresh the page and we see that it's scheduled. If we were to go back and put this and backdate this, we then see that it's now published and it would then show in our list. And so there are so many ways that you can do this, but the main idea is to not paint ourselves into a corner. This is a very simple example where we really only have one attribute at play, but this could be so much more complicated. And as you are designing the functionality, you need to think whether or not a Boolean is the right option, because sometimes it could be something where you want to date for the future before a feature is enabled, before a blog post is published, or something similar. And I have seen in the past where it was a Boolean before, but then the scheduling for the future needed to come into play. And the route that was taken was to keep the Boolean as it was, but then also add in a date time. So all of the logic was dependent on both of those. And it caused a lot of problems because the integrity of the data was sometimes out of whack where something may not be published, but there was a scheduled date or that date was already passed, but it still wasn't published or where it was published but then there was no date. So trying to balance the logic between two different attributes like that, it's not impossible, but you do open yourself up for some more edge cases. Whereas using just the published stat column or a date time column could make things much more simple. But if the use case is where you do need it to be on or off, enabled or disabled, published or unpublished, and scheduling it for the future is never an issue, then using the Boolean could be the right option. But just note, if it ever does become an issue, and when you go to refactor it, you've at least now seen a path forward where you don't have to split the logic between two different attributes, but you can convert it over to a date and time. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.